Right, that was probably Triple A calling me. But ever, anyway, um, it should have just started up. Or at least made made some kind of slow cracking noise, which it didn't do. It didn't make any kind of slow cracking noise. So I'm like, at that point, I know it wasn't the battery. Because if it was a slow cracking noise, I would have known that it was maybe a weak battery. And maybe the jumper pack was not strong enough to jump the car. But that's not the case here. So moving down to diagnosis, it's not the battery. Okay, I could rule that out. So what's next? Could it be the alternator? It wasn't. It's not the alternator. I mean, I, I ruled that out immediately, knowing that, knowing that my car wasn't on. It was parked. It was off. My car was completely off before I tried to come in to start it. So if it was on and and it died out, you know, I I could assume that it was the alternator. Anyway, um, the other test for the alternator is, if it was the alternator, if you put any kind of power to the battery, the car would start up. But once you take the power off, the cable's off, the car would die out. That didn't happen this time. This didn't happen in this situation. So I could rule out the alternator. Now, I, <clears throat> my next obvious thing, probably would have been my first obvious thing was, well, my second would have been a starter. But I'm not even going to go there right now because I had to start a change that eight months ago. Bought it, rebuilt from AutoZone. And that wasn't on my mind when this happened. I mean, I could have... It wasn't on my mind because the, the car had, you know, once I once you put a new starter in, it should last you over 100,000 miles, but... Anyway, I'm you know I moved on to either the fuse, it could be a fuse or a relay, a relay. So I'm like think to myself, could it be the relay? I mean, I was looking at the fuses. I don't have a tester for the fuses. As far as the relay is concerned, I don't think it's the relay because I'm hearing it click. As far as the click is probably the solenoid from the starter clicking when you try to turn it on. It's just the motor is not initiating. So you know. I can hear a distinct click every time I try to turn it on. If I'm hearing, you know, I've had these situations before. Never had a starter go out on me this early. But anyway, it clicked. So I could rule out the relay knowing that the relay actually relays the electricity from the battery to the starter. And once you hear that click from the starter, you know that it's the relay is good. So... You know, those easy fixes, it's not the relay. So <clears throat> so up next is, could it be a fuse? Could it be a fuse? Um, I have no way of testing it out at all at this time. I don't have a fuse tester with me. But, but um, I've had situations where the fuse would keep the car from starting and the situations are two, two different situations. One situation with the car not starting because of the fuse issue was um, a main fuse that was blown. I was getting no electricity in the car whatsoever. It's as if the, and the is it's as if the car had no connection, no power connection to the battery at all. It was completely dead. Nothing would turn on. No lights. No lights. No nothing at all. No noises. No lights. Nothing. It's as if it didn't have a battery connected to it. So I swapped out that fuse and the car started normally. Everything works. That's not the situation here because I am getting electricity to all the parts. I am getting electricity to all the parts. So that's not the situation. What's next? Um, the other fuse situation I had was um, my car would crank. It would crank. But it just won't turn, won't turn over, won't turn over. It wouldn't turn over. It would crank up. It wouldn't turn over. So you know, the fuse problem with that is, I believe it was either the fuse, the fuel pump fuse that was blown, or the ECM, the car's computer fuse that was blown. I'm not quite sure what that was, but it was that was a fuse situation. Swap the fuse out, and the car started without problem. But that's not this situation, considering it's not cranking at all. It is not cranking at all. So I don't think it's the fuse, but you know, I don't think it's the fuses. I mean, could I pull the fuse out without a fuse tester and, and look at the fuse to see whether the fuse um, were blown or not? I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. Cause I, you know, 
I, it's, it's easier using a fuse tester to test out all the fuses. I'm not going to spend all that time to do that. I'm just not at this point. Um, so I'm waiting for AAA. I'm telling you guys about this situation. So what could it be if all those things are ruled out? Now, it could be a ground wire. It could be a ground wire. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't able to look at the ground wire from the battery to the frame because, I mean, I wasn't going to take off the battery and stuff like that. Um, it could be the ground wire, but it could be a, a ground wire that's either broken off, disconnected, frayed, or whatever. I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, that could be the situation. But moreover, moreover, I think it's probably the starter, unfortunately. Now, I've only, within the last eight months, I've put in maybe 10,000 miles, 10,000 miles on the starter. You know, 10,000 miles on the starter. And uh, unfortunately... I believe at this point it's a starter. Now, I could go out and try to bump the starter, look at the starter, try to bump in and try to start it up. I could do that. I could run a cable to the starter and the solenoid deposit line to the starter and solenoid, connect those and see if the starter works. Could do that. But I am not going to do either of those things because it's raining outside right now while it's wet. Complicates another situation, but I got to say that this starter has been rebuilt as a rebuilt starter. It's not a brand new starter. Unfortunately, if you guys know anything about rebuilt starter, they are a pain in the butt as far as reliability is concerned because with, with these starters, they only replace the starter part that's broken the rest of it has the same mileage that it had on it previously so that's the case with rebuild starter now a brand new starter would have ran me 300 bucks and i don't know too much about that the reliability of brand new starters either but this starter cost me 150 plus the core charge was 40 which is when the tax came up to like 200 something like that so at this point, I'm going to have to wait for Triple A to give me to get me towed to my house where I got all my tools and I'll probably need to spend some time on this car. It sucks a lot, but unfortunately that's the situation and it's going to suck so much more if I got to go and and take this starter out and then go to AutoZone have it replaced cuz it's under warranted. But that's not the issue. The issue is the time that I'm wasting for Triple A to come. The time that I'm wasting to put in the starter. That's either money out of my pocket or time out of or time out of my time. But um regardless, I'm gonna give you guys a um you know, I'm gonna I'm let I'm gonna let you guys know what the situation is, because at this point, uh I'm going to wait 45 minutes for Trip Ray to get here. Hey guys, so... So, I did... I, I was able to find out what the situation is. And the situation with my car is... Was the starter. Now, I did a couple of tests on it. I was able to bump it. Nothing happened. Bumped it. Tried to start it up. Nothing happened. Um, I was able to put um, some cables from to the solenoid uh, connection and try to start up that way. Nothing happened, unfortunately. Solenoid and a positive terminal on the start. Nothing happened. So I knew it was a starter at that point. Took it out. Went to AutoZone. Had some issues. Didn't have some issues, but had some words for AutoZone. And they told me that They'll get me a, a another brand new rebuilt rebuilt starter. Now I could have maybe bought um, a brand new starter, but unfortunately that would have cost me three hundred dollars out of pocket instead of getting another free starter, which is rebuilt. But but I didn't want to spend three hundred dollars, so I got the rebuilt one, put it in, start it up, it started up, 
no problem. Kept on starting it up, tried a couple of times, no problem. And it works. It works. So the, the issue was the starter managed to get it fixed. It was the starter, wasn't a quick fix, wasn't a fuse, wasn't a relay. Couldn't pop one out, pop one in. Killed a lot of my time. But if you guys are watching this video, that's, you know, if you guys are going to kind of diagnose issues with a non starting issues like that, similar situation hope this has helped you guys out please give me a thumbs up um please comment if you guys have any comments please subscribe all right guys take care